So picture this as an opportunity for the future to have meetings as simple off a single PC screen or your TV set at home or the telepresence units like Wim showed you with Professor Kalam and people around the world or think about it virtually where the majority of communications will not be voice the majority of communications will be body English and the ability as though you're physically in the same location so at this time I'd like to beam up Martin De Beers and Chuck Stuckey back from San Jose Martin I'm beaming you up now with my spatial controls how are you doing? <laughs> hey, Jack, how are you doing? We're doing great, thank you. Hey, John. Hey, guys. You know, yesterday, Martin, you looked a little bit bigger than me. I hope today we're going to play with some sizes and we'll kind of give the audience an idea how we can make variations on that. I believe so, John. I'll tell you, it's been a long day here in California. You know, we were up here at 3 a.m. our time. We're still wearing the same shirts. And we had a 5.6 magnitude earthquake about an hour ago. So uh, I'm here to tell you, though, that everything's fine. We've had no major damage here in San Jose. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, as a global company, we'll continue to operate. Well, you know, it's amazing. You can see each other as though we were playing poker. I can see you sweat a little bit. Uh, I can see that you both shaved since the last time I saw you. But we don't have the sense of smell yet. But it is... Uh, that that was... a good thing, John. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me what you have planned for us today and, and uh, what is of interest to you. And just like I did yesterday, I will interject and ask you questions. And we'll do this almost like a review in terms of what's on your mind. Let me uh, periodically disrupt. Martin, if you were to kind of bring us up to speed, you and Chuck, in terms of what's on your mind, what's been the acceptance, give us some numbers and some meat behind some of the concepts. Certainly, John. We're going to make two announcements. Uh, before we go to the second one, we'd like to speak to you briefly. Uh, and give you a little bit more detail on this experience we're showing here and the two emerging technologies we're showcasing. So Chuck, why don't you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, so this is very exciting. This is a world's first, which is you're having this experience, which we call the on-stage experience, John. Yes. And this is the very first time that this has been done live and interactive. So I can see John, I can see Wim down front. So this is a big announcement of creating a new telepresence experience called on-stage. So as you think right. about that, Chuck, we're really saying the capability, just like a regular meeting, we can interrupt each other. Uh, you will see this technology while initially it will be done in a stage type environment, perhaps for big meetings or speeches. It will over time come to the business environment and then over time to your home. So as you begin to think about these won't just be games our kids play, this is all of a sudden how we will create our own entertainment, how we interface to others both in the personal side and the business world. That's right, John. And, you know, beyond just us being here on stage, the other real fascinating part of this is that we're using our digital media system to broadcast this event worldwide across the IP network as a platform. In fact, John, about a half an hour ago before I went on stage, I called my dad in South Africa and I said, Dad, I'm going to be uh, live in San Jose, but I'll be on stage in Bangalore. And if you tune in to Cisco IPTV, you can watch it live from South Africa. So that's a pretty amazing experience. Martin, explain to us a little bit about the digital media system. You know, many of us kind of think of that as signs. What you're really saying is this can go to any electronic device, a PC or signage or to a TV. Could you expand on that a little bit more? Absolutely, John. It's uh, full interoperability in the IP world because this solution is standards-based. And uh, any PC with a broadband connection can tune into this broadcast from telepresence. Uh, secondly, our digital signage displays throughout the Cisco campus. Uh, this is also being shown live. Uh, and then we're also, in fact, showing this live on traditional video conferencing equipment here around the campus. So we're showing interoperability with multiple types of systems for this broadcast today. Got it. Now, this is why it's so important for the audience to understand. You can't have separate video systems, one for entertainment, one for telepresence, one for the PC, uh, one for the devices in your hand. It should be any device to any content over any combination of networks. And this is why this has to be an architectural decision, not a decision on an individual product. Now, Martin, you and Chuck would think I was slipping if I didn't say, give me some data. How are we doing? 
And I'll remind the audience that nothing we say relative to the uh, success of this business entity should be inferred in any way about our last quarter, which closed Saturday night. So the numbers in total are not material to our financial success. But tell me how business is going. Chuck, are you making your commitments to me? Yeah, we're doing very well. Thanks. Now, I can see him twitch a little bit, so this is good. It's here. like you're right next to me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we are doing very well with our customers. Telepresence is really a business transformation technology. The virtual meeting that Wim showed a little while ago has been adopted. People are accelerating their time to market. These are our customers around the world. We have telepresence in 28 countries, John. Customers in 28 countries around the world who have adopted this and their speed to market, scaling scarce expertise, and also it's a green technology. So at Cisco, where you've deployed over 150 rooms now, at Cisco we've taken the equivalent of 3,300 cars off the road in terms of reducing our carbon footprint. And at the same time, these rooms are used four to five hours a day, which is unprecedented utilization. So this, at our customers around the world and at Cisco around the world, this technology is being adopted very rapidly. Now, it's important for the audience to understand that the power of this type of network is the number of nodes that you have squared. They call it Metcalfe's Law. But in essence, as you only have five or six of these systems, the value is good. When you begin to get to 10 or 20, it's 10 squared or 20 squared. When you get to 100, it's 100 squared, which is 10,000 is the power of the network. So the more we're getting in place, the higher the utilization goes up and the more groups collaborate together. That's right. And this experience that we're creating, which is the, one of the first, the on stage, just adds that much more business value to telepresence. We're using telepresence technology and a new type of display and creating even more business value. As you can see today, Martin could be here and Martin can be there and at the same time. And so in between, I had two other presentations here in San Jose uh, on innovation, John. <laughs> yes, so if you begin to think about this, you can say, John, that's very expensive what you are proposing. You can have the technology at this level for perhaps healthcare in certain sites. You could have a telepresence in a simpler level where you literally are able to connect any device to be able to capture that information and to give it to the key doctors around the world and for them to collaborate together on a diagnosis. So this is something that just won't be at the very high end of the market. It will come all the way down to rural communities over time. Okay, well, I just realized I'm doing another part of the world, but before I go, just to have a little bit of fun, I know that as our day ends here, it's almost 10 o'clock, that we're going to toss the ball, as it were, every day to our globalization center in the east. So I wanted to make a little pass to a whim out in the audience. We haven't Thanks quite lot, figured John. out how to make that virtually come through to your hands, whim, or how do you pass it back. But uh, Chuck, your humor's improving. I like that. And uh, thanks very much. All kidding aside, you're on a tremendous run. Congratulations on the last quarter. Great numbers. Martin, where are we going next? You've been tremendous on innovation, creativity. Uh, how do we really use the innovation engine, not only here in India, but around the world, perhaps in the concepts of wikis and other people participating? You know, John, we've seen Web 2.0 technologies transform the way people collaborate. Mass collaboration is now alive and well, and uh, creativity and innovation is blooming because of that. We leveraged that inside of Cisco over the last two years with an internal idea wiki that has generated more than $500 billion business ideas that we are now uh, investing in, not in all of them, but in the interesting ones. Uh, and as we thought about this, the idea came to mind to create a competition, and this is what we're announcing today, a contest on innovation called iPrize. And iPrize will be a three-month contest where innovators and entrepreneurs anywhere in the world can go to Cisco.com, share their ideas, form teams, and collaborate. Uh, and what we will then do at the end of that period is we will interview the finalists using Cisco Telepresence from different parts of the world. We'll pick the finalist team, and what we'll do is we will hire those, that team of people that could be from multiple countries, bring them on board as a virtual team as Cisco employees. They'll share a $250,000 sign-on bonus. And what we will then do is invest millions of dollars over the coming years 
to make this a new emerging technology and hopefully another new billion dollar business for Cisco. So what you begin to see is not just using this technology internal or business to business, not just including your customers, but now including everyone in the world. And it doesn't matter if you're in Croatia, South Africa, uh, India, uh, Azerbaijan, suddenly you can participate. And then you allow yourself to work together in formal social networks, which work together as a team. We build a process that we can evaluate the leadership ideas, and then we tie a reward system to bring them into the Cisco family and then give them the real challenge, which is not only about the creativeness of the idea, how do you bring the product to market? Martin, I love it. It's a great idea. As always, uh, your group never disappoints me. Uh, congratulations on just tremendous innovation. Thank you, John. And you know, one last comment on this. For me, this is close to home because, you know, there is so much creativity out in the world, but many people does not have the opportunities we have here in Silicon Valley. We are very blessed to have access to venture capital and many, many resources. But through mass collaboration and the network as a platform, people in South Africa and many other parts of the world will be able to participate and get access to uh, this innovation process. And that's very exciting. Martin, it's amazing. Congratulations. Doing good. It's the right thing to do, but it's also just good for business. Well done. Absolutely. Thanks, John. Thank you. So I'll Have be a good back day, for Q&A, I believe. All right. Basketball coming back. All right. Thanks. <laughs>